This is Land of Havilah, Psalm 111. It's ten verses in all, praising Yahweh from start to finish. Mostly easy to understand. We'll read it all, then comment. Praise Yah. I will give thanks to Yahweh with my whole heart in the counsel of the upright and in the congregation. Yahweh's works are great, pondered by all those who delight in them. His work is honor and majesty. His righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonderful works to be remembered. Yahweh is gracious and merciful. He has given food to those who fear him. He always remembers his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works and giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are truth and justice. All his precepts are sure. They are established forever and ever. They're done in truth and uprightness. He has sent redemption to his people. He has ordained his covenant forever. His name is holy and awesome. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom. All those who do his work have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Comment in verse 1, I'll give thanks to Yahweh with my whole heart in the counsel of the upright and in the congregation, end quote. When we congregate as Christians, we're congregating with the upright, assuming we're not hypocrites. But the verse has a more futuristic feel to it as if the psalmist is envisioning the congregation of the upright in the hereafter. He's anticipating the atmosphere there without the shackles and constraints of this life and having everyone's understanding expanded, being released from every inhibition. He'll give thanks to Yahweh along with all the rest in the vast congregation. There's nothing stopping us from giving him thanks like that now, but how much better then? In verse 5, Yahweh always remembers his covenant. Yahweh's covenant is everything he said, such as to Adam and Eve, Noah, Abraham, Moses, and so forth, all the promises he made to them. And nowadays, it's the, it's the new covenant in Christ prophesied in Jeremiah 31, verses 31 to 34. The commonality of all his covenants may be summed up in 2 Chronicles 15, 2, quote, Yahweh is with you while you're with him, and if you seek him, he'll be found by you, but if you forsake him, he'll forsake you, end quote. But that falls a little short of being what the psalmist is talking about in verse 5. He says again, Yahweh always remembers his covenant, emphasizing how diligently Yahweh fulfills his part to bless those who seek him. God will absolutely positively be found by those who seek him, and he'll bless them beyond what they ask or think, Ephesians 3.20. Someone might start out on the Christian walk thinking, well, I'll just give this a try and see how it goes. Someone more experienced knows it absolutely goes well whenever we keep faith because Yahweh remembers his covenant to hold up his end. Our part is to have faith. His promised role that he doesn't forget is to bless those who have faith. And in verse 6, Yahweh gives his people the heritage of the nations. Nations there is goyim in Hebrew, which means all the non-Israelite people of the world. Almost by definition, the goyim don't keep covenant with Yahweh. And heritage there is also translated inheritance. Yahweh gives his people the complete inheritance of everything. As Jesus said, in the end, he'll take away the talent from the person who hid his, who did nothing with what God gave him, and he'll give it to the one with ten talents. The one God already blessed will wind up with even more, Matthew 25:28. And he said, Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth, Matthew 5, 5. And he said, Then the king will tell those on his right hand, Come, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world, Matthew 25, 34. So those with faith will get everything. God included the Gentiles in the inheritance when he said to Paul on the road to Damascus that he, that he was sending him to the Jews and to the Gentiles, quote, to open their eyes that they might turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive remission of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me, end quote. So it turns out that nationality wasn't key to the inheritance. The key was sanctification by faith. Sanctification means separation. God will deny a person an inheritance not based on the genetics of his DNA, not based on ethnic identity, whether he's goyim in the national sense, but whether he's goyim in the sense of not having faith. 
is sanctification by faith, not Israelite versus Goyim. Even in the Old Testament, clearly some Israelites disqualified themselves by forsaking the covenant, and some Goyim qualified themselves by adopting it, such as Ruth. Their rejection of the covenant or acceptance of it was based on faith. From the dawn of creation until now, sanctification, which is separation to God, a belonging to God, attendant with all its blessings, has always been based on faith. So getting back to verse 6 where this started, Yahweh gives his people the heritage or inheritance of the goyim, which is non-believers. We'll inherit everything there is to inherit, including what was due them had they had faith. Isaac was prophetic when Esau asked him for a blessing. He said, you're too late. I already gave everything to Jacob. There's nothing left for you, Genesis 27, 37. God will give all the inheritance due to all mankind to those who are sanctified by faith. For the rest, there'll be nothing. We have the inheritance of the nations. In verse 7 of the psalm, all Yahweh's precepts are sure, meaning we can bank on what Yahweh says. If he said it, he'll stand behind it. He even expects it of men that if any words proceed from a man's mouth, that man shall fulfill it. Numbers 30, verse 2. How much more will Yahweh fulfill the word of his mouth? His precepts are sure. In verse 10, the fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom. In navigation at sea, before there were electronics, it wasn't good enough to have a vector and no other information. A person had to first determine his location and desired destination And from those two points, he determined the vector. If he miscalculated his current location or desired destination, the vector would only get him more lost than he already was. In life, wisdom is the vector, but wisdom is worthless without the fear of the Lord. Psalm 112 is next. 